Good day to you all. Good afternoon to everyone. Hope everyone's well. Hope everyone's staying safe, having a great day. Uh, the best day they possibly can, given everything that's going on in the world. Um, what we're talking about today, we're going to be talking about frames. Now, frames should be a fairly simple subject, but unfortunately, it makes things quite complicated, given the amount of, given the different types of frames you can have, the sheer quantity of different types of frames there are out there, and obviously what you can fill the frames with as well. By that, I'm talking with your foundation. Um, we'll touch base on going on to that in just a second and before I start I just want to make a massive thank you to everyone that's joining me today, people that have subscribed, people that have commented, liked, all that sort of stuff. Um, you, you, the support is massively appreciated so thank you very much indeed. So frames, like I said, should be a fairly easy subject but like I said it's a little bit complicated and when a new beekeeper goes into, um, goes into keeping bees, uh, myself included when I first started, frames just confused the hell out of me. Um, just too many different types and all this sort of stuff. The best test, the best advice I can give everyone is once you've got a type of frame which you like using, just keep using that one. Don't keep chopping and changing. Just use a frame which you know, use a frame which you trust, use a frame which you uh, are happy with. So different types of frames. I'm going to talk about ones which can be specifically used uh, for national and also for WBC. Uh, I'm not going to touch base on Top Bar or um, uh, Langstroth at this point in time because I don't use either and therefore I don't really feel it's a, best, a good idea for me to give you that much of advice or opinion on something that I don't use myself. But what I will do is after doing a lot more research into those, I will touch base on it when I do a video regarding basic beekeeping equipment and what type of hives are, are out there. But for now we'll focus on the frames for WBC and National. reason I'm using WBC and National is because these frames can be used in both. So DN, SN are the two different types of frames you're going to be looking for. DN is a deep National and SN is a, uh, it's a shallow National. So SN and DN. Um, there are numbers of different, several different numbers which go apart from those ones, but I'm going to focus on those ones today because they are going to be the most common ones that you're going to come across. DN um, 1 and DN4, the difference between the two of them, the main difference between the two of them, are the fact that DN4 is a self-spacing frame. So what you'll notice is on the side of a DN4 frame is you have got wedges. Uh, they're on Hoffman sides, so these sides are called Hoffman frames. Um, and what you'll notice is when you put them in a beehive, you'll push them together and they will self-space perfectly. You don't need to worry about trying to space them yourself, you don't need to worry about putting um, spaces on the ends of the lugs. All you need to do is put them in the frame, close them up and you know it's fine. So that's your DN4. Your DN1, complete opposite, is effectively saying that you need to space them yourself. So either by putting spaces on the ends or by putting, uh, by spacing yourself by using a, a tool or, or if you are that experienced, your own nine. So I use DN4. Reason I use DN4 is for my brood boxes is because I don't want to mess around with them once I finish with the inspection. And once I finish with the inspection, I want to close them up as quickly as I can and get them back to their day, back, you know, let them get back to their day. Uh, I don't want to waste time trying to work out what the spacing is or anything like that. Push them back together, close them up. So that's the DN4 is the reason I use it. DN1s, like I said, they just don't space. So the sides of their frames are flat and you need to put something in additionally to make sure they're spaced correctly. Uh, moving on to the supers. So this is your SN1 and SN4. Again, we'll talk about those two. And as you'd expect, SN4, self-spacing. SN1, not self-spacing. Simplest way of looking at it. On the, um, with your supers, if you are going to go for SN1, which is what I use, I use SN1 for my supers, um, you will need to get some sort of way of spacing them again. So either by using a, some castellation um, spacers, which can be nailed into the side of your super, or there's a tool which you can place on top of your frames and basically drag them across, and that spaces them perfectly, um, depending on obviously what you're going for. So I use the castellations because that allows the bees to build out the honeycomb a little bit bigger, uh, and therefore the, the, the frames can hold more honey, therefore I don't need to do less extracting and get the same amount of honey. So that's that's the gist of it. Um, touching base on those, I'll move on to what is uh, inside your frame. So by that we're referring to the foundation that you're going to be using. And again, a number of different types you can use, be it wax, be it plastic, or be it uh, just a starting strip, and I'll talk about that in a second. So I'll talk about what I use first of all. Now I use foundation and I use wired foundation. I use wired foundation for both my 
brew boxes and my brood frames. And I also use, um, sorry, Laurie just turning up outside and dipping it for me. We also use um, wired foundation in our supers as well. Now in my brood box, and the reason I use it is because it makes it stronger, essentially speaking. So when you are picking up your frames and looking at them, that extra bit of wire going through the frames does give it a lot more, um, makes it a lot more sturdy and less likely to fall apart on you. And the reason I use it on my shallows, on my supers, uh, is because I don't, when I'm extracting, when obviously they're going through the extractor, when you're spinning it, that bit of wire just holds it a little bit harder together. So it's less likely to explode on you. So that's the reasons I use it. Now you can use um, wireless foundation uh, if you so wish. Uh, it's the same sort of thing apart from it doesn't have that extra strength added to it. Uh, and when you're using, uh, if you're using a wireless one in your in your super, you've obviously got the chance of making cut comb out there if you wish. However, if you are making cut comb, if you're using any type of foundation, when you are making those cuts of your comb, just be prepared that in the middle of that, you are gonna have a chunky bit of wax, okay? So just keep that in mind. Um, so a lot of people, rather than using foundation, uh, wax foundation, which is like I said, what I use, they will use plastic. Now, the, the advantages of using plastic is the fact that when you have finished with that frame, you can pop the plastic out, clean it up, and use it again. Simple. Um, and if you are, uh, and if you are using uh, plastic ones, uh, the only reason uh, the only reason I don't use plastic ones is because you have to encourage the bees on them first of all. That's what I was trying to say before I stumbled over myself. So if you want to use plastic, bees won't touch it if it's just plastic, they don't like working on it. So in order to get your bees working on plastic foundation, the first thing you need to do is coat it in beeswax. So you need to melt down some beeswax and coat the plastic on it. It will basically give a starting point for those bees to start building out the honeycomb. It's a lot of effort, in my opinion, uh, when you can just buy foundation with beeswax already made into it. I believe the bees prefer the um, beeswax foundation. It is a little bit more expensive, and like I said, you might need to replace it time and time again, but I think the bees prefer it. So that's why I don't use plastic. You can get yellow and you can get black foundation, uh, sorry, black um, plastic foundation. And the difference between the fact that is you use a black one, a lot of people have said that if you use a black foundation, you can see the eggs easier. Haven't tried it myself, I'm just going by what people have said before. So that's the reason why people use black or yellow. Um, moving on now to using a starter strip. Now, a lot of the hives, such as I think it's the, the flow hive, uh, when they send you out that one, they just give you starter strips. So a starter strip is basically nailed into the top of your frame and it allows the bees to naturally draw out the frame as they want to. So they can start at the top, build the beeswax and build it straight down. Should build it straight down, but it's, they are known to go a little bit wobbly from time to time, especially if your hive's not level. So the, the ones that use um, natural comb, which the bees make themselves, it is known to be very delicate until you they are completely drawn out top to bottom, side to side. So if you are gonna be doing an inspection uh, using starter strips, just make sure you're not messing about with your frames too much until the whole frame is attached. There's a great video on, I say great video, it's a bit of a hard uh, and a horrible thing to witness, but it's a video on YouTube and I appreciate the chat for um, putting it out there on one of his mistakes. Uh, so I've, I think I've mentioned Bino Buff Farm before. He, uh, when the, the chap there has got his, uh, his flow hive built up with, uh, as, as I mentioned, just drawing out their own comb. And whilst they're doing an inspection, inspection, he can look at it and the, wet, and the bees are waving back and forward, back and forward, and the whole thing collapses and falls off the starter strip. Um, so it, it's just something to bear in mind if you are going to go about and using the natural comb method. Make sure you're not picking it up and moving it about until they are, they've completed the frame, basically. You don't want to mess it around too much. So that has touched base on wax, it's touched base on plastic, it's touched base on going the natural route. Is there anything else I want to discuss at the moment? I don't think there is. I think that's it for the chatting bit. I hope you can take something away from this. Uh, what we do after this is there'll be um, a, a little picture of some description, I'm not too sure what yet. But after this, we'll have a video of me basically putting together one of the frames. Uh, I'm not too sure which frame it will be yet. Uh, because I'm not too sure what's out in the shed, but it will be one of the frames in order to put together and show you how it's done. So again, massive thank you for watching. I uh, hope you've learned something from me. Um, please stay tuned, a little bit more to come, and uh, we'll have plenty more videos as they come as well. So have a great day, and here's me building a frame. Evening all, morning all. 
afternoon all um second part of um this video which i'm just going to put together which is basically an introduction of how i'm putting together frames and bits of information about frames um we are going to be building a dn4 uh, british standard deep frame uh, you can tell it's dn4 self spacing because of the wedges on the side of the side bars you can see there you can hopefully you can see them just about on the video so i've talked about those on the first part of this video uh, this is the only frames that I've actually got wax foundation for. Um, I haven't got any super foundation or anything like that, so I'm just going to pop one of these ones from start to finish. Um, kit we need, obviously foundation, if you're going with foundation. I use wired foundation, um, especially for my brood frames, just purely because of the fact that it gives that extra little bit of stability, extra bit of strength in it. So we've got our wax, we've got our foundation, top bar, bottom bars, side bars, pin hammer, knife, and bag of nails. Uh, these aren't the best nails in the world, so you may unfortunately see one of these split. Um, I hope I wanted to get thinner nails, but for some reason I ordered these ones. Uh, sold, as, um, sold as frame nails, but unfortunately they're a little bit fatter than the ones I normally work with, but they, they, they do, they do the job. So, a number of different ways of putting frames together. Um, some people, uh, you'll, I'll go through in a minute and I'll show you the, the, the different ways that some people do them, but I'm going to show you the way which is um, recognised by the um, BBKA, so the British Beekeeping Association, so when you go and do exams, tests and things like that, this would be the way that they expect you to put together a frame. Um, and uh, like try and weigh the way that I try and keep it as well. So I'll grab out one of the foundations, pop that away. Try and keep the foundation nice and flat, nice and secure until you actually need it otherwise it ends up getting warped and all sorts of stuff so one bit of foundation first bit is you have here on the top bars you have this piece of wood here which needs to come off and if you can just about make sure that on there so easiest way push it all together and bend upwards splits comes off nice and clean uh does normally leave a little bit of wood in the inside there you wouldn't be wrong for leaving it and also some here you wouldn't be wrong for leaving it but i'll try and pull it off as best I can. This one's come off really well actually. And if you do have a little bit left over, grab your knife. This one's not very sharp. There you go, just room it off. And the same goes for here. You can also do that with a hive tool, but I haven't got one to hand, I've got a knife to hand. So, top bar, two side bars. Make sure you've got the groove running inside, your piece, of, your piece of wax will basically run inside this groove. One on one side. And you need a bit of a wiggle. And on the other side. And a bit of a wiggle. And you can see, it's starting already to take shape as an actual frame. Zoom in there to see. So nails wise, what I'll do is I'll just pass that down a bit. Excuse the banging. safe so you have a few bangs this evening uh this afternoon uh with this i've got a little bit more here just pull off there we go um so nails wise you a lot of people just stick nails in this side here going straight in but it's supposed to have one in there and one at an angle going through these bits here so if you can get a nail going through here into here that'd be great and then the same on the other side so just put this on. these ones are also um second quality frames Purchased them during the forum sale, and I don't have a, I don't have a nail gun or anything like that. It's just a case of sticking them in the best you can. So what? One on one side. On that side. Nail going at an angle. Nail going straight in. Same on the other side. And again, that's one in here. So we've now got that in going anywhere. So that is really, really sturdy though. So next bit you want to do, on that side, is with your foundation. You'll notice you've got two eyelets at the top. 
and three eyelets at the bottom, like so. Fold these over. They're all nice and flat. Happy days. And all you want to do is the three that are flat go towards the top. Like so. So now what you've got is you've got the eyelets resting along this bit here. So, well, I've done a bit wrong here, haven't I? Before that bit, let's just write that out, sorry. Before that bit, one of your rails, if you're using these types of frames, you've got these rails which run along the top or run along the bottom. Whack one in, like so. Now, again, different ways people are doing nailing is you can see, you've seen people before which have put them through the side here to go straight through the bar. It's supposed to be putting it down through the middle there. So whack it down through the middle, straight into the box, into there. So I'll just knock those ones in. Sorry, I should have done this bit first. Before getting the frame ready, or the wax ready. One. Two. I will invest in that. A nail gun or a pin gun at some point, but I haven't got one at the moment. So now moving on, wax. Straight in, like so. Sometimes you'll notice you've got a little bit of wood on these ones, especially the seconds. A little bit here that just gets in the way sometimes of the foundation. Depending on where you got your wax and your frames and your foundation from, don't worry about pulling those little bits off. Um, just allows it to go a little bit easier, uh, but luckily on this one it hasn't caused any problems. So with those in, second rail, press that in. So tight. Make sure you've got your two eyelets. Picking at the top, one can fold one way, one can fold the other one, doesn't have a bit of security. And you may notice as well, when you put it in, a little bit of an overlap, just give it a bash. So, so that's nice to do now. So let's get those ones in. Now if this, get this in. If you've, um, if you've not built frames before, you're going to take your time over this. Let me just say that now. It's, it will take you a long time, quite a long time, to get your first frame built. But once you've done it thousands of times, you'll fly through it. So that's that's all in nice and secure. As you can see, the two nails in there, two nails in there. We're just going to fold over the two ringlets at the top, whichever you can see there. They've just folded over, which leaves us just with this bottom bit now. So the piece of wood which you pulled off in the first place, straight back to where it was. Now this is here is where you see people do things quite differently. So options you've got is, I've seen people bang the nail straight through there, straight through there and straight through there. So it goes, the nail just pops out there. The problem that you've got with that is a lot of the time the nail is slightly too long and it ends up popping out the top like so. I can't see just behind my thumb. And when you're cleaning up the frames, so when it's inside the hive and you're cleaning up the frames, imagine that's obviously sat on the top there and you're pushing a, a um, hive tool across here to scrape off some wax. You're then going to be hitting nails and it's going to be causing all sorts of problems. You can rip gloves and all that sort of stuff. So we don't want to do that. Um, the other way I've seen people doing it is just banging the nail straight through here. So straight through this piece of wood and straight into here. Again, not really the best way to be doing it. The ideal way of doing it is with a nail, you're going in at an angle to try and catch not only the ringlet underneath, but also at an angle so it can go straight into the piece of wood. That way it should go into all of the wood here and not pop out the side. This is fiddly though. That's why people do it different ways. So don't get me wrong, this is fiddly. In, let's say and you can see it's, oh, it's just about popped out the top there you can see just literally just pop, popped out the top there and um, that'll do nicely that'll be fine so three nails 
you know, on here. Careful, obviously, when you're doing the, um, when you're banging these ones in, that you don't hit the wax, because if you hit the wax, you've got a massive hole in it, and we don't want that. So one in like so. Gonna pop out as well. Yeah, it's gonna pop out as well. Darn it! And it's just popped out there as well. What I'll do so just knock a little bit. That'd be fine. That'd be fine. And last one. <clears throat> Straight through. We have it on the middle. Like so. So that's in as well. It's not quite in. Let's get that a bit more. And a tiny little bit on that one. So essentially speaking, you can see what I'm trying to do. You want to try and knock it at an angle so it's coming out along this bit. So the length of the um, the length of the nail is into the wood. Like I said, these nails are slightly too big, so that might be the reason why I'm just popping at the top here. But it will do the job. So essentially speaking, that is a bog standard DN4 frame built and ready to use with some foundation in which is wired. Um, what I'll do now is I'll just pop this in the freezer. Um, the freezer is not turned on, it's just popping it in the freezer just to keep it stored. You want to try and keep these upright as best you can. The moment you start storing them like that, the heat gets onto it, this warps and it becomes almost unusable. So I hate using it when it's warped. Um, but that's that's basically it. Uh, build up enough of these frames and what you'll notice is, I'll grab another top bar. Because these are self-spacing ones, you'll notice that when they two knock together like that, they will be perfectly spaced because you'll have obviously one of these sidebars attached here and they'll be perfectly well spaced because of this little wedge here. So that's your, um, that's your DM4 frames with um, self-spacing Hoffman um, sides. So like I said, they're really good. These are all I use for my um, for my for my deeps and my 14 by 12s I always use self-spacing. Um, I use, I believe it's SN1s. Um, for my supers, so if I can find an SM1 side, here you go. So that's an SM1 side, as you can see, obviously, uh, SN will be um, shallow national, sh super national, I think it's shallow national. So you can see it's obviously just flat on both sides. So with these ones, you'll need to either space them yourself or put them in castellations, which are these which will basically space the frames for you. But uh, we can go on to them again when we start building super boxes. But for now, that's the basic how to build a frame with you. Um, nice and easy, simple to do. Uh, and like I said, once you've done a thousand, you'll fly through them. But uh, just don't be off put when it takes you a good 10, 20 minutes to build one, um, you know, <laughs> to, uh, to build one without talking and just concentrating on it. Um, but that's, that's, that's not come out too bad. So that can be used in one of my deeps. Um, like I said, I use either these ones or 14 by 12, depending on what sort of hive I'm putting together. And um, obviously the SM ones for my um, for my um, my supers. So that's it for today. Um, like I said, the first part of this video, I hope you've enjoyed, um, given that it's just almost like an introduction to different types of frames, what the sort of things they do. Um, and the second part is, um, like I said, just a quick introduction of how to build one. So uh, if you do like, please um, please like the video. Please uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, last check, we were up to about 150-ish. Um, so that's amazing. Thank you so much to everyone that's subscribing to me, uh, watching the content, liking the content, and um, sharing the content. Uh, your, your support is massively appreciated. I will um, I'll put that out there right now. So uh, again, massive thank you. I uh, hope you're having a great day. Hope you enjoy the video. I hope you uh, stay safe and all that sort of stuff. So thanks again. Have a great day. All the best. Bye-bye.